Hello kids, Daddy's here. Right now, Daddy will show you a psychological thriller film from 2016, titled A Cure for Wellness. Be a good kid and subscribe to Daddy's channel. Spoilers ahead, watch out. This film begins with a young executive at a financial services firm in New York City, Lockhart. Lockhart goes to a meeting in order to bring the company's CEO, Roland Pembroke. He was supposed to be away for two weeks in the Swiss Alps but has not returned. They need Pembroke back to sign off on an upcoming merger. And he arrives in Switzerland, the wellness center at a remote location in the Swiss Alps. Lockhart takes a ride from a taxi driver. The driver tells him a bad history with the people that live on the hill. Back to the time of the barons, the land and everyone in it belonged to one family, the von Reichmerls. 200 years ago, there was a story of a baron who wanted to protect his bloodline by marrying his sister. After learning she was infertile, the Baron began performing experiments on the villagers, which led to them revolting and burning the Baron's sister alive. He finally arrives at Wellness Center Sanatorium. Unfortunately, as he comes and tells a nurse if he looks for a someone named Pembroke but the nurse says that visiting hours have just ended. He asks her to meet the manager. While on the Wellness Center he won't get any signal service because it's part of the treatment. He meets the manager and explains the reason why he came. He says that Mr. Pembroke is the CEO of a major financial institution and he hopes he can make an exception to bring Mr. Pembroke back to New York for a while. The manager replies, the wellness center also has the rule to limit the stresses of the modern world. But Lockhart begs him to meet with Mr. Pembroke, he already planned to get back to New York tonight with him. The manager asks him to be back at 7 o'clock, he agrees and drinks water before he leaves. He leaves with the taxi driver and tells him to take him to a hotel. He sees a girl standing at the edge of the balcony. On the way to the hotel, a deer runs out from the woods and the car hit the deer, which gets stuck in the windshield and it makes the car to swerve off the road and crash into a ditch. He finally awakens on three days later in the sanitary. He meets the wellness's director, Dr. Volmer, who points out that he suffered a broken leg as a result of the accident. Volmer suggests him to drink much of water. It seems strange because he finds a parasitic creature floating in the glass after he drinks the water. He looks around sanatorium and finds some activities related to the water such as aerobic in the pool, heat spa treatment and aquarium pool. He goes to the bathhouse and finds Mr. Pembroke. He explains the reason why he came and tries to retrieve him back to New York. As he replies that he doesn't want to come back because Volmer told him to don't involve himself about the business matter anymore. Lockhart persuades him by saying that how important he is. The company concerned about his presence, because there are certain irregularities in some of the accounts that need to be clarified before the merger can be completed. Mr. Pembroke finally changes his mind and he agrees. Later on, Lockhart meets one of the patients, Watkins, an old lady in particular enjoys crossword puzzles. She shows him the place where Baron hung himself. Lockhart then meets Hannah, a young woman who considers herself a special case. Lockhart says he wants to go out from this place but she answers that no one ever leaves, while he seems not to take it seriously about what she said. He heads to Mr. Pembroke's room for pick him up but he only finds nurses clean up his room. There's no Mr. Pembroke there. He straightly goes to Volmer and asks him about Mr. Pembroke. Volmer tells him that he has unfortunately taken a turn for the worse because of their conversation about business matters. It's hard to believe because Lockhart thinks he looks fine. He threatens Volmer to involve this thing with a lawyer. All of a sudden, his nose is bleeding, he loses his steady then gets feigned. Volmer begins to check his condition and the result seems fine. He explains that he is the youngest person who has a depleted immune system because of the pressures of the modern world. He offers him a simple process of purification while waiting for Mr. Pembroke's treatment after two or three days ahead. Lockhart agrees. As Volmer goes out, he takes a chance by stealing Mr. Pembroke's file. Lockhart undergoes his first treatment inside a water tank and sets him up with oxygen to breathe. The water fills up, and it makes him sink into the bottom. The treatment lasts 30 minutes. There's a male nurse that will be monitoring him and if he has any issues, just tap on the side of the tank. Every process is recorded by the system. At the same time, a female nurse comes and tries to tempt a male nurse. Meanwhile, the tank suddenly fills up with eels, causing Lockhart to panic and he tries to tap the tank. Meanwhile, the nurse is jerking off himself and doesn't even hear it. He tries hard to open the tank but he can't. He rises and has his breathing tube pulled off by an eel. 
He nearly drowns until he gets the tank to open and spill the water out. He reports the nurse about what he saw, as they try to check it but no one there. A female nurse explains some patients experience visions with this particular treatment and it's all part of the cure. He observes Mr. Pembroke's file and sees his teeth's rungan has lost unreasonably. He, then looks out the window and sees a man bring a patient trolley into a room. The next morning, he meets Watkins and asks her about their own. Watkins replies that she doesn't know and shows him an article about Baron who used to make some sort of medical experiments. Apparently performed on his own peasants, and people went missing, then dried up like the mummies of Egypt. Lockhart gives Hannah his ballerina figurine in exchange for a bike ride into town. Then, the two go together, and they stop at a local tavern. Lockhart buys himself and Hannah beers and runs into the taxi driver, who survived the crash. A policeman says there's no patient ever came along here. Lockhart asks them about a doctor he can talk to and the owner tells him the address. As they begin the conversation by asking her a question, it proves that Hannah's mother died in a fire when she was young and Volmer told that her father will come when she is better. Then, she's taking her vitamin. Lockhart asks her to wait, and he goes to find something. He, then gives Mr. Pembroke's file to the pharmacist. He explains that Mr. Pembroke's teeth are falling out, barring any pre-existing condition, and it can be called as chronic dehydration. It looks strange because Lockhart thinks the patient always drink plenty of water. Lockhart asks questions regarding the wellness center and its history. He replies that the Baroness was infertile. The pharmacist then goes to a cow that is ailing and ready to die. He cuts the cow's stomach open and out spills a stillborn calf and some eels. He goes back to the bar and calls his office. He wonders why his company didn't give him any further information, even though Volmer said that he already told them. It must be there's something wrong. He heads to Hannah and begs her tell something about the sanatorium and all the strange things. Suddenly, he fights with someone that has paid for Hannah to dance until he is saved by Volmer, who arrives to pick up them both. He brings back them to the sanatorium. As he had a same dream, he sees a man bring out a trolley patient into a room like the night before. He looks himself in the mirror, then feels something strange, as he touches his tooth and it comes to lose until he must pull it out himself. He brings it to a staff member who places it in water. Lockhart then goes off to continue looking for answers. He sneaks past the staff as he goes through several wings. He comes across one room where several patients, including Pembroke, he looks around to find Mr. Pembroke but he sees an old man who looks so dry like a mummy and he is still alive. Hen, two staffs come, he tries to hide and enters the elevator. The elevator brings him into a room full of tubes. Accidentally, he meets Mrs. Watkins and she's so weak like a mummy. He tells him if Baroness was infertile, but she tells him back if Baroness was fertile. She was pregnant the night of the wedding before they burned her. The villagers cut out the fetus and threw it in the aquifer. The child survived and she doesn't know. Lockhart is surprised. He accidentally touches a shelf and the staffs hear it. Then, he runs away. He hides into a dark room as he tries to turn on the lamp. He is stunned to see what happened. He sees several patients, including Pembroke. When Lockhart tries to return to his room, he is found by the caretaker along with Volmer and another staff member. Lockhart tells them the issue with his tooth but Volmer doesn't believe him. He is taken into a room and strapped down as he has a drill forced through his front tooth. Lockhart escapes and heads into town to report Volmer's experiments to a police officer. He tells him everything about the wellness center. He gives him his office's number to verify himself. When the police officer calls, he sees the same vitamin as Hannah has. He begins to realize if he is one of them. Suddenly, Volmer and his staff member arrive to bring him back. Volmer's caretaker says that Lockhart is one of the patients and he signed the admission form. They think he has possible delusions, a side effect of the toxins leaving the body. He has been a disruptive element since he arrived. He has been spending time with Mrs. Watkins talking about Baron and Baroness. At the same time, Mr. Pembroke appears and says that Lockhart has forced him back to New York. He looks confused about what happened. After all, Lockhart starts to act and think like Pembroke in that he believes he is not well and have to stay for a cure. He then breaks a glass and uses a shard to cut open his cast, revealing that his leg was never broken. He goes into a room where a man brings a trolley. He finds a secret place that contains strange things such as eels and babies. 
He also finds human skins and sees a woman picture there. He walks toward a trolley on the water, as he opens it and revealing that it's Mrs. Watkins. At the same time, an old man brings another trolley of the dead patient. He throws off the corpse into the water, and the eels straightly eat them. But that man knows Lockhart notices him. He hits him and they fight. Lockhart is strong enough to defeat him until he dies. Hannah runs and finds Volmer in a room where he, the staff, and some patients are having dinner. He knows that Hannah got her first period. Lockhart runs in and starts to tell everyone that Volmer is a liar and is the one responsible for everyone being sick due to whatever is in the water, which is responsible for making their teeth fall out as a side effect. Patients start to stand, which he thinks is in support of him, but they are all actually going against him saying that they are unwell. They all crowd around Lockhart until he passes out. Lockhart wakes up in a chamber where he is immobile. Volmer forces a tube down his throat and uses the eel-filled liquid to put into his body where the eels filter out the vitamins that Volmer has all his patients take. As it happens, Lockhart has his teeth fixed and appears to be changed just like the rest of the patients, stuck in a delusion that he is unwell. Meanwhile, Hannah asks him to go and he replies that why people want to leave. Volmer throws a wedding party that night with the patients and staff. He even gives Hannah a new dress and the necklace. Volmer shows her a picture of woman who wears the same dress and necklace like hers. Hannah doesn't know anything and Volmer asks her to the bed. He leads her to a bed. He ties her hands. He touches her chest and rips her dress. He begins to take off his pants and ready to bang her. Another side, Lockhart sees Mrs. Watkins's book. In Volmer's office room, Lockhart starts to think about when Watkins told him about the Baron. He finds a picture that was taken a while after the fire. There is also a note saying, she doesn't know. Then, he breaks the picture and uses a glass to magnify one subject. It reveals that the man holding hands with a little girl. When Volmer is ready, suddenly, Lockhart breaks out of his room. He knows the fact that Hannah is his daughter. They have a fight, wherein Volmer pulls off the skin from his face to reveal himself as the hideously scarred Baron. Lockhart leads Volmer into a trap where he dropped a bunch of fuel, leading Lockhart to set a fire. Volmer catches fire and then sets fire to the curtains as he tries to extinguish himself. The fire then spreads up toward the rest of the castle. Lockhart tries to free Hannah, but Volmer attacks him. Volmer drags Lockhart near the eel pool and prepares to kill him, but Hannah takes a shovel and swings it down into Volmer's head. He stumbles backwards and falls into the pool to become eel food. The castle is burning down like what happened in 200 years ago. Lockhart and Hannah escape by riding the bicycle. On the road, they are stopped by a car. Turns out, it's his colleagues. They tell him to get in the car, but he refuses. He and Hannah continue riding away into the night. That's all for today kids. Help daddy by like and subscribe. See you on the next videos.